FIG Ministry presents the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Join me, Alyssa Aegis, and my co-hosts, Georgia Byrne and Father Rob Gallia, as we break open the upcoming Sunday Gospels and discuss relevant topics and life issues from a Catholic perspective. For a shorter, more reflective explanation of the Gospels, be sure to check out our sister podcast, Catholic Influencers, Father Rob Gallia Homilies. So back, what, what episode are we in? We are up to episode 13. It's 13. just going by so fast, isn't it, Father Rob? It is, it is. And uh, exciting times as well. Um, as even now, um, we've been going, y- you were saying, you're telling me that we're almost reaching a milestone also in this... A um, couple of episodes away and we would have had 100 episodes of the Catholic Influencers podcast. So if you're still listening from episode one, thank you. And Thank you, and let us know. Well let us done. know if you're <laughs> one of those faithful ones that have been listening all hundred episodes and almost a hundred episodes, <laughs> and hope you'll survive until we actually reach the hundred. Maybe we should have a giveaway for our hundredth uh, episode. We we'll- might. We've just finished a giveaway on um, Saint Joseph, which was announced over the um, last weekend. And yeah, let's do an. We'll do a giveaway for our hundredth episode. Yeah, I that's. I think it's a good idea. Also, we're <laughs> reaching the month of May as well, the month of Mary. I'm excited about that. Um, but we're still in Easter. We're still in the the season of Easter. And uh, as we continue to journey towards um, the love of God, but there's also like a lot of people listening um, that are struggling right now, especially like in India, Brazil, of places that are really suffering from the pandemic right now. And just to let you know that we're thinking of you, we pray for you, especially on our mm-hmm. online masses. And we, we, we offer mass for you for healing for I was reading today, it is 300,000 cases a day in India. Oh my God. We can't even imagine. The population of Malta, where I come from, is 400,000. So wow. imagine like 300,000 cases. We just gone, the suffering, the pain, and, and the hospitals, of course, are overflowing. And overflowing. Mm. So we, we just let you know we're thinking of you, we're praying for you as we do this. Yeah. Anything exciting happened to you recently? Or anything? I got to ha- attend a wedding, like as a guest, which is very rare for me because. I sing at weddings all the time, but it was really good to be on the other side of the stage. But I did get up for a song. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't resist myself. it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you see a microphone. I can't help it. I can't help it. And you go it and was, you go. It was literally that. But um, no, no, it was very, very good to get to get all dressed up and, and have some time with some family. So, yeah, that's me. Oh, nice. How about you, Father Rob? Well, I haven't had, uh, I haven't, I've, I've celebrated a few weddings, but uh, um, what's exciting for me is that we, um, I'm in the middle of a tour, like, so it's a, it's been six, six weeks of touring and I'm heading to Maitland, New, Newcastle, and um, I've just come from Townsville, we've been traveling around, you know, thank God, but um, by contrast in India, we hardly have, if not, I mean, only controlled um, the virus in Australia, so uh, we, yeah, our life is exactly. pretty normal, so we're grateful at the same time. But um, today we're going to talk, um, we're going to hear Jesus talk and pray for his disciples, just how in love, how loved we are by Jesus and how he loves his disciples, how he looks out for us. So, um, uh, Alyssa, maybe you can proclaim the gospel for us, John 17, 11 to 19. Yes. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves." I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they, don't, they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they may so that they also may be sanctified in truth and there's a, a 
Beautiful prayer as we, we just heard of Jesus praying for his disciples, that he loved his disciples, but he knew also that they were going to be in danger. He knew that it was going to be difficult, that there was going to be a difficult time ahead. Now, this is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. He, um, Jesus was with his disciples, surrounded by his disciples. He discipled them, he prepared them, but now he knew he was going and he knew that like it's an uh-oh moment. <laughs> like, uh, I really need to pray for these, these guys, these girls, because it's going to be tough. That's right. The disciples were, um, they, they were going to face persecution after Jesus was gone. Um, you know, the world was going to hate them for their relationship with Jesus. But at the same time, we've got this contrast. The father was going to love the disciples because of their relationship for Jesus, um, their relationship with Jesus. Um, and so here Jesus is asking the father to protect them from these attacks, mm. just like Jesus was protecting the disciples while he was um, on the earth. Yes, and I think this is one of the things that we need to understand that as disciples, he was praying for us, okay? So we are the sheep amongst the wolves that we're going out. And Jesus knows that it is not easy. But at the same time, it's interesting that we're going to talk about what he prayed, but also what he didn't pray. He didn't pray that they would be separated from the world, that they would be protected from from the, the being in the world. But he said, as they are immersed in the world, as they are there, God, let them remain faithful, let them remain strong. And this is one of the things that we go through. We are in the world. We're called to be in the world, to this in this place of danger, but and not to run from it, to be faithful in it, but not be a, um, not to run away from from the difficulties, from the persecutions that come our way. And yeah. Yeah, and so the disciple is the one who has a commission and they're commissioned with a task and they're sent out into the world. I don't know if you remember, just a few weeks ago, we talked about John 3.16, which is a, a very powerful scripture verse. And um, it says, um, God so loved the world, the world like that he gave his only son, that he loves everyone. He doesn't love, but he loves the world also that in which there is evil. He loved the world that he came into the world um, to serve it, uh, to save it. And now what he's saying is, hey, I'm going, Father, I'm leaving. Now they are going to take my place. They're going to be in the world. Father, God so loved the world that he sent Christ's disciples into the world, that they may believe in Jesus. So we now, as disciples, have taken on the powerful mission of Jesus, the great commission of Jesus to be disciples in the world, and that they would win, we would win, the world for Jesus. We're all called to be disciples, okay? And this is one of the things that, even the title we have for this podcast, Catholic Influencers, is because we need to understand that we have a commission. You who are listening, you who are watching, even if you feel like your, your job is to learn to be discipled, to, to be quiet, it's not your job to be quiet. It's your job to be loud, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus question I ask is, who? when was the last time you helped someone fall in love with Jesus? When was the last time you won, or at least you attempted to win someone for Jesus? This is our commission. Every yeah. one of us are called to do that. Um, yeah, and then I guess in, in, in sharing that mission with Jesus, like Jesus suffered too, so we might suffer as well, but then we always got to remember what happened to Jesus after he suffered. Like he, he resurrected and he was exalted in divine glory in heaven. And then when we take up our cross, just like Jesus showed us how to do, that's what's going to happen to us. We hope. God and we, and yes, exactly. But in order to do that, we have to remain separated. We have to remain holy. Let's talk about what Jesus actually prayed, because I think we need to break it open. I'm um, um, understanding what is what is Jesus praying for you? What is Jesus will for you? And I think there are four things that that can come out in this prayer for me, at least quite clearly. The first thing is that they are, as we just said, his disciples, you and me, are not to be taken out of the world. We must live our Christianity in the world, in the mess, in the brokenness, in the, 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 the addictions of the world, in, in the temptations of the world. And somehow, yes, we need to protect ourselves from the world because we need to be in the world, but not of the world, but not be scandalized by the world, not, not, be to, not, not see the world as, as evil and all of a sudden we shut ourselves off in our big cathedrals, in our basilicas, in our churches, 
and, and we're closed off from the world. Yes, we protect the vulnerable. Yes, we protect our hearts. We protect our minds. But we cannot hide in our churches. We cannot hide in, in, in our prayer closets. You see, Bishop Joe, again, I keep repeating this, is prayer is the first thing, but it's not everything. We need to go out, to go out and make disciples in the world. And that's not easy. <laughs> and he knows, he knows that that's where the devil's prowling. It is. Um, but, you know, and Jesus is asking for protection from the evil one as well, because he knows that, that, that the evil one is going to try and attack people. So we know... The primary enemy of Jesus is the devil and the same enemy of, it's the same enemy of the disciples. So um, Jesus already asks for protection at the start of this gospel passage, but again, he repeats it and he says, protect them um, from the evil one. And we pray this in the Our Father, you know, protect us from evil. Um, yes. Yeah. So that's the second thing, like, is that he prayed for protection from the evil one that uh, even, I love the verse. I, I even wrote a song about it. It's taken from 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9. It says this. St. Paul says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. You see, it's, you're going to get struck, you're going to get persecuted, you're going to get um, crushed, you, you, you're going to get all, uh, you're going to get abandoned, and, but you, even in that, you can remain strong, you can be strong, you can stand up again. Even though you knock down, you stand up. And this is what God is praying. He's not praying, please God, don't let them get punched. Please God, don't let them get persecuted. No, he's not praying that. He's praying when they get persecuted, let them be able to stand up again. Yeah. When they get tempted by the evil one, let them be able to resist the devil. You know, and this is one thing that we, we need to build our spiritual muscle. And this is why we can't, we can't hide from the world. We can't hide from the persecution. We can't hide from the temptation. But we must learn to resist, to stand up, to build that spiritual muscle so that we'll be able to fulfill this prayer which Jesus prayed, that we may be protected from the evil one. But protected is when we don't give in to it. It doesn't mean it doesn't come our way. That's right. The, sec the third thing is that he prayed for unity. He prayed for unity of his disciples. This is an interesting prayer. Yeah, and I guess the basis of this unity among the disciples, Jesus is basing this unity on the unity that he has with the Father, which I thought was, um, yeah, really, really interesting to know. And the other thing too, so he's... And Jesus is asking for, um, he's talking about the disciples still being in the world. And this petition to the Father about the disciples' unity, it comes straight after this. And so it kind of suggests that um, some of these attacks that are going to happen to the disciples, it's going to be, um, it's going to threaten the disciples' unity. And, you know, we see that in the church. You know, we see it within the Catholic church and we see that within the greater Christian church as well. Yes. That Jesus actually wanted us to be one. Yes, and the church by no means is one. We're not, as no. much as we, we would like to think we are. Um, we're not one. In fact, this is the only prayer that Jesus ever prayed that has not yet been fulfilled. And if we want to proclaim the gospel effectively, if we want to um, really be the light of Jesus, this is something that we need to work on. It doesn't mean we agree with everything. And again, this is part of what Jesus is saying. He said he didn't pray, God, let them agree with everything. Let them be of, of one mind. Let, no, he says, let them be one. Let them lay their differences down and focus on the task that lies ahead. Yeah. And that is to proclaim Jesus and is to help the world fall in love with Jesus. And it is this is what he says in another scripture verse. He says, it is by their fruit, and that part of that fruit is the fruit of unity, they will know that you are mine, that you are yeah. my disciples. And the fruit of love, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I think I missed one out, but these are the fruit of the Spirit. And it comes with unity and it comes with an understanding that we don't have to be right all the time. Yes, stick to what your, your conscience, stick to what is right. But at the end of the day, we need to work together. We need to work in love. We need to work in service of one another. Fourth thing. Fourth point. The fourth thing is that the disciples may be consecrated by the truth. Ouch. This is, this is loaded here, okay? He prayed that they may be set apart, that they may be different, that they may be holy. Jeremiah 1.5 says this, says this, Before I formed you 
in the womb I knew you, and before you were born I consecrated you. I appointed you as prophet to the nations. This is, um, this is something so, so powerful that we're called to be different. Now, yes, you're meant to be in the world, but when people look at you, you're meant to be different, not like yeah. everyone else. People are meant to disagree with you. People are meant to think you're weird. People are meant to think that you don't fit in. And if, if, if you fit in so perfectly that people don't even know that you're different, then reassess, check it out. Check, well, something's, something's definitely wrong. Yeah. Because as a disciple, we're meant to be weirdos in a sense. We're <laughs> meant to stand out. We're meant to be, yes, with the people, but not of the people. Um, yeah, and Jesus is saying, you know, he wants the disciples to be consecrated in truth. But before they can be consecrated in truth, Jesus still had to do one more thing. He still had to go to the cross and complete his mission. Um, and Jesus says, he says, I consecrate myself for them. So Jesus is doing it first and then he's consecrating us to go out into the world. Yes. And, and be because weird. <laughs> And be weird. That's right. Jesus must have, he was beautiful, beautiful. But he was also weird as well. So weird that they actually wanted to get rid of him. And this is our tendency mm. as Christians that we want to get rid, uh, not as Christians, as humans, that we want to get rid of anything that's weird, anything that's not, um, th that makes us uncomfortable. And this is what we need to do. We, as we are set apart, we are called to be discomforters, people who make the world uncomfortable. Because you see, the problem with the world is that we're losing. We're, we're losing souls because we're afraid, as his disciples, we're afraid to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. And yes, we need to be in proximity with people. We need to be clever how we do it, but certainly don't. God loves us as we are. He loves the world. He, 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 God so loved the world. He loves the world, but he loves the world too much to leave it as it is. Mm -hmm. and, and it's our responsibility. It's our hands, our feet, our voices that need to go out to make the world uncomfortable. But in order to do that, to be set apart, we need to be with the one who is holy, the one who is set apart. If you're not praying, if you're not seeking the Lord, if you're not spending time with Jesus who is different, who is holy, who is set apart, then there's no way, no way you're going to be able to be set apart and holy. But I just want, Alyssa, because we're sort of giving theory here, but I don't know, like, you, you must see it, even like you're in the entertainment world, the entertainment industry, you're surrounded by people who must think you're weird, <laughs> who must think you're crazy. And yeah, I feel that. Like um, where do you find the strength? Where, where, where's your strength? For a long time, I was really scared to be open about my faith for that re very reason. Like I was scared people would think that I'd be weird, but, um, and they probably do think I'm weird, but I, I don't care. I love God too much to care if that, if that makes sense. Um, and there are times when I'd, I'd love to run away and, you know, I, it, it, it makes me really sad to see the state of the world and people not, not knowing God. Um, but then it's all, a friend said to me, um, recently, if not, if not you, then who, you know, like yes. God's given me a platform. And so maybe, maybe it might inspire somebody. It might not be in, in words. It might, it, I don't know, God, God use every, God uses everything. Like it might, I might inspire someone to think about God, hopefully. And you see, deep down, we all have a desire for God. And at first, when God approaches us through disciples, through people, they reject us, yes. But at the same time, they're the first ones that will come to you when, when you're in need, when they're in need. They're the first ones who, who will come. Oh, gosh, you know, I've had that. You know, I've had that so many times with people who send messages if someone's, um, a family member's about to die, like, oh, can can you help with, with getting getting a priest to come and see them? Like, and... um. Yeah, so it's a really beautiful thing to be able to help people. And they're the ones who, who would make fun of you for going to Mass, and they're the ones who would <laughs> sort of put you down for things. And then they're the ones that come to you when they really need it. You know, I, can't, I can't tell you how many, for example, weddings I've done of friends of people who thought I was nuts, I was crazy. Oh, really? <laughs> you know? Yes. And, uh, and the amount of, for example, I don't know, I, I was bullied even I at university by people who, who thought I was crazy. And they're the ones that are like asking me to bless their businesses and asking oh, me wow. to pray for them when, when their family is sick. And you just think, you know, at the end of the day, what? yes, you're persecuted, you're pressed down, but remain strong because at the end of the day, the people who are persecuting you, 
need you. The people who are putting you down need you to remain faithful, need you to remain strong, because if you don't, there's no hope for their salvation. <laughs> there's no hope for, for peace. You know, the world... And, and this is why Jesus is praying for his disciples, because he knows it's, you're going to get persecuted. It's going to be tough, but hold on, and it's going to be worth it. As you, um, Alyssa, you were saying, at the end, of, we're going to face the resurrection, those who are faithful. That's right. So so be be confident in sharing your faith. And um, yeah, you, you don't know what the, what the fruits of your small actions might be in, in 10 years' time. Yes, exactly. And our call is to love and to obey Jesus, okay? And, and, the, and to, to bring others to do the same. So we love and obey Jesus, and then by our example, we cause others to do the same. But this is only possible, only poss uh, possible as we place our lives in his hands. Very good. So that's a, a power-packed gospel, as they always are. Um, yeah. So we might move to a joke. I feel like laughing. Okay, um, let's see. So, um, a joke <laughs> for some reason. The um, let's see. Ah, here we go. Dad joke. Okay, okay. So, our dad joke for the week. I'm going to. Um, I hope I don't have to explain it to you, Alyssa. But we'll we'll see um, how this works. What is the difference between a poorly? <laughs> so I'm terrible at these. <laughs> What's the difference between? A poorly dressed person on a tricycle and a well dressed person on a bicycle? The answer is att attire. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, attire, it means clothes and attire. Okay, um, okay, okay, there you go. <laughs> um, so let's see if we can get to. Um, Attire, attire means clothes. A double T I R E. Oh, attire. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go. go. Yep. So some <laughs> reason. So also just, um, just a reminder also that our ministry partners. If you'd like to become a ministry partner, this is only made possible. Our um, this podcast is only made possible because of our ministry partners. So if you're interested and able to become a ministry partner, support this ministry, please go to frgministry.com forward slash ministry partner. We um, usually have a, a, a jingle that goes with this, but for some reason, we're again, as always, having some kind of technical problem here. But that's, that's fun. That's part of the fun. That's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's the devil. Or, or lack of preparation on, on my part, maybe. It's time for Saint Me a Picture. <laughs> Who's our saint this week? Okay, so this week we are talking about Saint Francis, who is one of the patrons of FRG Ministry, if you didn't know that. Um, so Saint Francis is the patron of animals. He was born in Assisi in Italy in the year 1181. So Something that I found interesting was he was originally baptized with the name Giovanni, which is in Italian, um, it means John in English. So he was named after John the Baptist, but his father was furious at this because he didn't want his son to be a man of God. And so he renamed him to Francesco, which is Francis in Italian. Which um, wasn't so Francis name. going. So there wasn't a saint, Francis. Until... No, it wasn't a Catholic name back then. Yeah. But look, look what happened. And then <laughs> he ended up being the first saint. And one I of know, the first so, saints, yeah. How awesome is that? Yeah, re really cool. So um, Francis growing up, he had a really, he was a really easy life growing up. His, his family, his father was quite rich and everyone in his town loved him. He used to party a lot, but he really wanted to be a noble or a knight. He just wanted this, this big glory. And, you know, he finally got his dream to be eventually part of a crusade but after one day's ride he had a dream um where god had kind of told him francis you've, you've got it all wrong and so he came home and he was laughed at by his whole village um and then he started to get you know really um he started to spend a lot of time um praying on his relationship with god his conversion didn't really happen overnight but he was praying in the san damiano church um in Assisi where um, Christ on the crucifix said to him, he spoke to him and he said, Francis, repair my church. And so Francis 
kind of thought he meant the church literally. And so he went to his father's store and stole some fabric oh. um, and sold it to get money to start to repair the church. But his, but his father actually accidentally, sorry, actually saw that as theft. Which it was. Um, and he put him before the bishop asking him, which it was, yes. <laughs> but you wouldn't think that your dad would say that. But anyway, <laughs> um, put him before the bishop asking him to return the money and renounce his rights as heir to his father's inheritance and everything. The bishop said to Francis to return return this money and, and to trust in God that God would provide. So Francis was pretty convinced. And so he ended up leaving um, with nothing, not even not even the clothes on his back, and he went into the freezing woods singing. And, you know, he he began to preach and people came to him to follow his life of sleeping in the garden and begging for food and just um, loving God. And he eventually um, founded an order. He's considered the founder of all Franciscan orders. He had a really great love of nature. Um, so kind of like the sparrow was as much as his, his brother as the Pope was. Um, and then his final years were filled with suffering and he eventually went blind and he died in um on october the 4th 1226 and that's his actually actually his feast day october the 4th there's a lot of info about saint francis that was really hard to condense do you have anything to add father Robert? well i just um i think we have a pope named after him as well so from a point where the giovanni where it comes to a name that he thought uh, i'm going to change not going to give him a christian name so now to one of the greatest saints to now also having a pope named after him so um how god can can take um, what we see as as something, um, a, an adversity into something so beautiful, something so powerful. This is the way God works in and through us. Okay, so now we go into our topic. Um, the topic of this week um, is um, an interesting one. It's a, a challenging one. Is it, it is, how do I stand strong when I'm surrounded by adversity? And this is something that we've lived. I know many of us have lived out. I know many of us have found it difficult and many of us have struggled that we find it hard to live in this world as a disciple. Jesus prayed that we would live as a disciple, but he knew also that it was going to be difficult. So we're going to just present you with three things that you need in order to live as a good faithful servant in adversity when it seems impossible, when it seems like everyone is is against you when you seem like a weirdo when you seem like the odd one out like saint francis as well like many of us today so let's talk about three things the first thing is knowing uh, yeah the first point is knowing upon whom we're standing on so um we need to have a center of gravity um and and that for us is, is jesus Yes. So if you don't know why you're living, why you're dying, why you're being persecuted, why you're being crushed down, why if you don't know the person, you see, and it's not just that we're not a, a set of morals. We're not just a set of, of um, ideals. We, our center of gravity needs to be Jesus, the person of Jesus, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, who is alive here. We need to have him as the center of our lives, a center of gravity. So you need to have a relationship with Jesus. And you need to maintain that relationship with Jesus. If you don't have that, there's no way, no mm -hmm. way you're going to be able to stand strong when difficulty comes your way. So that's number one. Know upon whom you stand, that you stand upon Jesus Christ and upon his word. Know his word, love his word, fall in love with his word, fall in love. And then you will, if you really love Jesus and have this relationship with Jesus, that's where you start to become unshakable. You're going to get pushed. Mm -hmm. You're going to get punched. You're going to get weight on your shoulders but you're going to be able to stand because Jesus is your center of gravity. The second thing, Elisa. Speaking of getting pushed and punched, we need to resist the devil and his lies. So um, we've been talking about this a lot today. We are in a war. Um, and so we really need to yeah, stay, stay strong and based on our center of gravity, but also with the swords of, of prayer and, and visiting the sacraments as often as we can. Um, that that is our strength to res to resisting the temp uh, the the devil. I think I read something this morning. I was scrolling um, Instagram as you do in the morning, and I saw a quote. I, I can't remember the saint it was from, but it said, um, "The minute we make the sign of the cross, the devil runs away." 
Yes, and this is that's such powerful prayers. You see, because the minute we turn to Jesus, the devil has, and and he, he sees our foundation. He sees where we stand, especially the cross. You know, making the sign of the cross. That's so powerful as well. I'm trying to find it here. If I'm not sure if I'm going to find it in time, but um, it's in the New Testament. There's a, a verse called. It's um, yeah, I found it here. So it's one Peter. Um, five verses eight to nine. I'm going to read this. It says this, be alert and of sober mind. Okay. So be alert and of sober mind. Keep your mind focused. Okay. Your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Verse nine, it says this, resist the devil standing firm, your center of gravity in faith, because you know that the family of believers through the world world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. So what he's saying here is to to resist the devil. You see, this is a, a tool we have to stay strong. It's not that we're not going to get tempted, but resist the temptation. I, I don't know if you know Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty is a motivational um, speaker. He was actually a Buddhist monk. Mm -hmm. And he's actually his book is now the best selling book in, in the world. Um, I, I'm just going to find his quote, and which really struck me yesterday. Um, he, he said this. Um, uh, this, for example, one of the temptations that he talks about. I see if you, I'm going to see if you can see this. Don't try to substitute lust for love. You have to starve your desire for material lust in order to build your appetite for divine love. Now, this is one of the temptations that we go through wow. last, okay? But this is the thing. This is, he's taken from 1 Peter, resist the devil, starve the temptation, starve that thing that is standing between you and God. And we need to work hard. You need to be a warrior. And like you said, it's a spiritual war. So if you, you, if you want to stand strong, you have to starve the temptation. Resist it. Stand strong. Be a woman. Be a, a man. Be a, a warrior. Be someone who knows that it's not going to be easy. That you have to to fight, and and part of fighting is resisting the devil. And it says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The third thing. So we really need to to believe what we proclaim and be fully persuaded. And so. Um, a word that gets thrown around sometimes is we, we can't be lukewarm in our faith, even in moments of doubt. Like, And when it's easy to run away from what we believe because it gets hard, in those moments, that's when it matters the most. We really need to be fully persuaded about what we what we believe. And when we're going through moments of doubt, how? how it's, it's, a, it's a tough question, you know, how, how do we stay fully persuaded? And, and we do that by the people that we surround ourselves with, the community. Um, Yes. And again, I just Googled. Uh, um, the, the, full of quotes today. Oh, no, I know. Just let's see if we can get this for those of you who are watching it on, on, um, on, on video. In the book of Revelation, it says this, um, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Like what? You see, this is the thing that we need to be mm -hmm. hot or cold. You let your yes be yes in the scripture says, and let your no be no. Be strong, believe and be fully convinced. And again, this is impossible without community. It's impossible without surrounding yourselves with other people who are convinced. And this, it's not about just, uh, okay, I, I, I will depend on the love of Jesus. No, you have to do your part as well. You have to do your part. You yeah. have to be strong and, and not lukewarm. Be radical. If, you, if you're not radical, then you're not going to survive. You're not going to survive. You, you, you can't be lukewarm. Um, it, it, it has to be like, we have to be strong. I, felt, I went on preach mode just yeah. there. Whew, there you go. The you did a little bit, but it was good. So that there's, there's our three points about how we stand strong when we're surrounded by um, adversary, ad adversary, adversity. Yeah. Anniversary. Um, yeah, I think that brings us to the end of... <laughs> Brings us to the end of this week's episode of the Catholic Influencers Podcast. Um, once again, we thank you for joining us. Um, if you're interested in learning more, you can um, enroll to our online courses at FRG Ministry. We've just started working on a new course all about the Mass. And Father Rob and I and everybody at FRG Ministry is very, very, very excited to bring this course to you. Um, so you can check out the courses that we currently have at courses.frgministry.com. Keep in touch with us in, on this podcast. You can send us an email 
podcast at frgministry.com. You can watch us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash frgministry. Connect with us on social media, Catholic Influencers underscore on Instagram, facebook.com forward slash Catholic Influencers, and also Cath Influencers on Twitter. Did I get everything, Father Rob? You did very well. I'm just impressed. I'm listening. <laughs> so just uh, please <laughs> yeah. stay in touch. Give us your comments. Subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends about it. We um, we need to get higher on the algorithm as more people are watching. Our um, viewership is increasing, but it needs to increase more as you share and as you subscribe and write reviews as well. Give us your five star reviews. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let his face shine upon you and we will see you again next week.